My name is Todd Riggs. I am both a pastor and a clinical, licensed clinical social worker in LACSW here in the Minneapolis area. I am the uh, director and founder of Affinity Ministries, Inc., where um, I've been do doing that for almost three decades, uh, where I've been in private practice, uh, working with clients, both children and adolescents, and uh, adults for different mental health issues. I provide uh, psychiatric or mental health counseling, spiritual coaching, life coaching, business coaching, individual coaching um, in my practice as well. Over the last 25 years, been involved in short-term medical missions where I bring the doctors and nurses and social workers and clinical people all over the world into orphanages. And I've, had, I've had the joy to um, bring, bring medical supplies and doctors and nurses into both Russia and St. Petersburg, also into Estonia, into Tartu, Estonia, and Tallinn, where I have had the history of being an adjunct professor in the pastoral care department uh, at the Tartu Academy of Theology. I've also been serving in, in an orphanage both in Guatemala and Costa Rica known as the Ogar de Vida uh, and uh, the Home of Life where, where uh, we provide um, medical supplies and all sorts of things to these orphanages. Also beginning to think about eventually wrapping up, uh, re retiring here in the next couple years. I work here three days a week in my office and I'm pretty busy outside of, outside of therapy. Um, and about four or five years ago, I published my own memoir called A Boy from Malachit. That process took about four years and as my family and close friends have always wanted for me to document my life's journey because uh, they tell me that I've led a pretty interesting childhood. I'm originally from, uh, born and raised out in the Pacific Northwest um, in uh, Tacoma, Washington, uh, where I grew up on uh, or Gravely Lake and then and then moved out to Gig Harbor. Uh, and my, when my parents bought a small, a small cottage um, that was, had, had some bedroom expanded uh, to the home, we had 120 feet of waterfront and from uh, age 11 all the, way up, all the way up through high school uh, and graduation, that's where I lived. Um, when I was 10, uh, which really sent the trajectory into mental health, when I was 10, my father was working for IBM at the time in Tacoma, and he took a leave of absence and uh, was asked to be general manager of Alpental Ski Resort. And so we had the pleasure and the joy of living up in the mountains on the weekends and then living on the ocean during the week where we went to school and led our life. But on one of these, on one of these mornings, uh, my dad and I went out to the back bowls, which we, we, we both of us love to ski fresh, deep powder. And on one, on one morning, uh, because he was the general manager and we were skiing with the avalanche crew, uh, I was 10 at the time, um, fairly good skier at age 10. We cut across this huge bowl and got as high as we could and we had to uh, create, some, create some space in the snow and my dad cut the trail and I, I followed him. And um, we got over this ledge, over this, of this cliff. And he, he said, uh, just follow my, follow my lead. Don't cut an edge because if you do, it's a sheet of ice underneath the, the freshly, um, the fresh fallen um, eight to 10 inches of snow. And so I said, okay. And what did I do? I start and I cut an edge and I, and I uh, just fell down on the snow and I couldn't stop, and I started the slide. 
My dad was probably 30 feet away, 40 feet away as he watched me go off the ledge. The cliff was 10 stories and um, that whole experience um, has shaped my life in terms of um, coming that close to death, uh, that close to um, just ending, you know, my life being, being, being done. And uh, I remember during the free fall, everything kind of went in slow motion and I hit two or three ledges and finally got down to the bottom. And uh, my dad saw this whole thing. He, it took him about four minutes or five minutes to get down uh, off the cliff and ski down. And, um, and he, we both hugged and, and held each other for a long time. And because he was the general manager of the, of the resort, he had a walkie-talkie and we got the ski patrol involved and I was carried off the mountain. People say, including my wife and my family, that that experience was both uh, a, life, a life changer for me, but also it was really the first time that I had an encounter with God. And I remember in the free falling that there was this huge loving presence that surrounded me in the fall. And where all, I, re, I wasn't really scared, I wasn't really um, nervous at all, but the, that presence has stuck with me. And, uh, it, it, and then the, in the years to follow, um, had some more experiences, and I realized that that was God protecting me. I think getting into mental health um, after being a pastor was huge, huge in terms of that experience um, and how God touched my life at that point as a boy. Uh, there, there were several other traumatic events that happened, but um, I, I, carry, I carry a lot of what happened to me as a boy, uh, living, living on Wallachet Bay and also what happened on the mountain and uh, with me, and I take that into my therapy sessions. You know, if there was, if there was a closing thought or a closing message um, that I want to just present to you. And that is um, what happened to me can happen to you. But the bottom line is that God took my palette of pain as a boy and all the experiences that I had and transformed it into a pulpit of purpose. I'm extremely driven by purpose. And my purpose is to serve people and love people my, my congregation right now is the, the, my clients who I serve. And uh, my, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate that the Lord led, led my wife and I out of the congregational ministry and into this ministry of working with those who are hurting and, and emotionally you know, abused and working through stuff. And as I work through my stuff, um, it's been helpful to help them.